Hey everybody, it's me, Devious Toaster, back again with Lisa. And, uh, see, there's this, this, uh, let's find this- OH! I just got butt-bumped by Pirate Guy, by Bobby Diddle. He diddled my doodle! I'll surprise attack him right in the ding-dong. Firebomb! What is going on? <coughs> I'm not going that way yet. I'm gonna go see if I can find some items for some joy because he's a friggin' drug addict here now and just, I got pooted on by the guy right there. I wanna get it. Go take a shower. I can't take a shower. Got my face all cut up because I can jump. No, you j suck. You suck. All right, I'm not craving joy yet, so let's try and do this. Okay. My intestines are in disarray. Good. Indigestion. That's what he gets. That was a little irritating. Great way to start the episode. He's full of holes. Let's find her. Wow, there's so many people that are just sitting there dead. Check the, the houses. This don't sound happy, but it's okay. You don't have to be happy to be successful. Oh! You just have to not do that. Oh. The world can be saved! Sure, the world could be saved, but how you doing, trash man? Smooth, ah, Jesse. What? I don't know where I'm going. What the hell's going on here? Who are you? Hi. What the hell are you looking at? Mm. Mm. Oh, hello there. My name is Nern. I'm considered the greatest historian of our time. I've gathered a wealth of knowledge about our Olaf and what happened. Many tales. Would you like to hear? Yes, I totally care, boring. Uh, I wish you were more enthusiastic. Oh well, I'll tell you anyway. Fuck you. Alright, it all started with what I like to call the flesh. I was sitting with my wife, God rest her soul, sipping on sweet lemon tea. I believe it was homemade by my sweet wife, God rest her soul. No, she just bought Arnold Palmer. Ha ha ha, you, you suck, you're stupid, you didn't pay attention. Oh wait, maybe she bought that from a store in a bottle. Yes, she did, ha <laughs> ha, okay. You know, like a plastic bottle? Well, hold on now, that would be ridiculous to buy a bottle of sweet lemon tea rather than transfer the contents into a glass. Why not just drink it from the bottle? I guess maybe so you could put the ice in the glass. But then again, making tea homemade would be just as time consuming, if not more. That sneaky bitch. Anyway, I'll save that story for later. I think I just got the gist of it. So, I'm sitting on my porch, drinking sweet lemon tea for my class, of course. Ho ho! When suddenly, a great strangeness fills my body. Something was wrong. I lived many years and I never felt something like this before. Do you know what it was? Yep, indigestion. It was my rocking chair! That wooden son of a gun stopped rocking! So I looked down and realized a little rock had gotten caught beneath my chair. A rock under my rocking chair! What a day! I decided it was time for bed. I had had a little bit too much excitement for one day. Ho-ho! I slid into my jammies, brushed my teeth, and said my prayers. As I was climbing into bed, I noticed my wife, God rest her soul, brushing her hair in the bathroom. As I peer across the hall, my body swell up with emotion. Why can't I be married to an attractive woman? Is it me? My bank account? I'm a tall guy. I work out 40 minutes a week. Is that not enough? Now my neighbor at time, Tom Forknight, was very short. His wife, Karen Forknight, played burger. Yeah, one of those women. Well, she was more attractive than my wife. I say she was soft six, whereas my wife was hard four. What's the deal? I thought women liked tall men. Why was Karen with him? Anyway, my horse of a wife called Rest or Soul crawls into bed next to me. She decided to leave the bedside light on so she could read her book. I was one of her romantic novels again. Give me a break. As if I don't already feel inadequate enough. Now, only do I have to compete with Tom, now I have to deal with these fictional hunks. Ay ay ay! At this point, I had already surpassed the urges of intimacy. I rolled over and tried to sleep. Her bedside light was only a minor annoyance. I was able to drift off. 
Then I woke up to a big flash of light. That's about it. You fucking serious? I just did that. Jeez, you're kind of smothering me. I'll talk to you later. I can tell by the way you are walking away that you don't want to leave. If you really want to hear another story, I tell you. Okay. Once upon a hot summer night, sometime in July. Was it July? My local grocery store in sells really good eggs in July. I don't know why. Do chickens operate better in heat? Fireworks maybe? I don't know. I don't want to get off topic. Point is, the eggs that summer were marvelous. Anyway, my wife and I, God rest her soul, went to a BBQ that night. It was ourselves at Dale Spooner's house. Well, his backyard. Connie Spooner doesn't want people in her home. I think she's just an uptight bitch. So at this barbecue... I'm sorry. i sorry. BBQ? I see none other than that's right, Tom Fortnite. Now, earlier in the day, my wife, God rest her soul, made a potato salad for the BBQ. Personally, I hate potato salad. I'm a mashed kind of fellow. Ho oh, ho! So I sat in the TV room, avoiding her to the BBQ. Once we were at the party, I made sure that this is myself for my dumb potato bitch wife. God rest her soul. I just didn't want anyone to think I would associate with someone that would bring a potato salad. Anyway, Tommy is a above mediocre wife. We're already there. To get this, they brought a fruit salad with whipped cream. The nerve of those fork nights. Needless to say, I gave my wife, God rest her soul, a couple choice words about whipped cream. Versus potato salad. Son of a bitch! A real tongue lashing! I can't keep doing this for the episode, the whole damn episode! Jeez, you're kind of smothering me. I'll talk to you later. Thanks. No? Not gonna do it again? Okay. Got a story? No? Okay. I guess I'm gonna go in your house and uh, talk to your dead potato bitch wife. Nothing? Come on. Take his shit! Okay. Hop, hop, hop and away! Help! Help! Okay. I guess I can't do anything but jump on his shit. Well then. Okay, I guess that's all the stories from... Captain Story over here. I was really hoping for uh, one more short story at least. Maybe short, yeah, short. but uh, maybe just. So maybe not. Well, hello again! Funny thing you hear. What, are you following me or something? Ho ho! Anyway, I often wonder what all happened here. What was that big flash? Why are we here? Even our night and our day cycle is hot. Sometimes days last ages and nights come rarely. And these clouds? So strange. What's happened to our Earth? Oh well, enough of that boring stuff. I once had a real kooky day at the doctor's office. I was in the waiting room, reading a teen magazine. Normally I don't indulge in adolescent publications, but I couldn't resist. I had recently heard the new artist on the radio, Ulysses Utensils. She's some young woman, maybe a boy, I don't know. Either way, that G-Lock had really grasped my attention. So I'm reading this magazine because I saw Ulysses on the cover. I still wasn't able to identify if it was a man or a woman. But as I'm reading, I notice something on the ceiling. I look up and see there's some water damage. You think a doctor would make enough money to maintain his office? I guess he cares about his cool jet skis more than his patient's comfort. And he's a assumably big house with a hard-potted wife. I wish my wife was like that. God rest her soul. Sorry, big ol'. Melons. Mm -hmm. Just then, a droplet of water falls on the ceiling. My eyes trail it all the way down to the ground. I stare at the floor for some time watching the carpet absorb the water. Suddenly my attention is caught by a small child. The child was glaring directly at me. I saw the devil looking right back at me beneath his eyes. I got nervous and quickly stared directly at my feet as not to aggravate the child. And that's when I noticed something. I was wearing two different kinds of socks! Golly, I'm all revved up after these thrilling exchanges. To be fair, you're a bit of a bore, but beggars can't be choosers. I think I'll stick around. I got many a tale to tell. Nan Guan Junior Party! I just achieve annoying guy. 
So that was most of the episode. See if I can find a spot to save it now. Because God knows, I am not doing that again. Chup, 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 chup. It's a bar. Bars. You can often find people for hiring bars. I got three people now, though, so I should be able to take on uh, take on more people. Uh, I don't know how efficient in battle annoying guy is going to be, but no, you don't. <laughs> Big pancake organ gonna gonna die now. Kill him! Kill him! Kill him! Kill him! No! Yes! Thank God! I did it all for the nookie! Good! You're dead! I need health and saving! I need to save! Everybody's dead. I need to save. Don't be anything stupid near me. Okay, okay. First, oh, save first, just in case. Save first. Now you give me soup. Yes. Oh, it's about time. Thank God. Uh oh. Why? <laughs> I got hit in the head. I got hit by a car. What do you want from me? You all right, buddy? He's knocked out cold. That's been an endeavor. That was an endeavor. Same exact spot here, but we got a new party member. This guy's just a, gonna have a barrel of flesh wounds by the end of this, I bet. This has got to be one of the best RPGs I've played in a long time. Uh, so thanks, ding -ling. So thanks for watching. I'm Devious Toaster. This has been Lisa. I'll see you next time when we try to let's find her! That guy's got bloody nipples. Or just real big ones. I'd, I'd rather not think about that.